The Lenten Observance celebrates history's most intriguing and life-changing twin events, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God's Son. Although many people know much already about the events that surrounded His crucifixion and glorious rising from the dead, yet many still remain ignorant about the true and real meaning of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. It is for this reason I would like to present to you this special Shooter Word Passion Week series entitled The Myths and the Facts of the Death of Jesus. It is my hope and prayer that as you watch this special presentation and ponder about the truths presented here, you will understand your own need to put your personal faith in Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior. God bless you. Christ's death, though tragic, was neither unfortunate nor unexpected. On the contrary, it was deliberate and planned from eternity by His Father in heaven. Jesus Christ Himself knew of this plan and heartily submitted to it. His death was never an accident in the first place. Prophet Isaiah prophesying about the death of Jesus wrote, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. Prophet Daniel prophesied the same thing. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one, that is referring to Christ, will be cut off and will have nothing. Jesus Christ himself, during his earthly ministry, knew perfectly as well that he would have to suffer and die for the sins of the people. We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. Speaking of his eventual death and coming back to life, Jesus said, The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. Hence, when Judas Iscariot, the chief priests, and the temple guards came in Gethsemane to arrest him, Jesus didn't resist them. He humbly submitted to them, knowing that his time has come. Even at the cross, while crucified between two thieves, Jesus was never vengeful nor was he angry at them. He was understandably forgiving to those who were against him. The death of Jesus was actually his father's way and the only way by which the world can be saved from God's wrath and judgment. The book of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says this, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Furthermore, in Revelation 5, 9, it also declares, because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. The death of Jesus and the subsequent shedding of his sinless blood from the cross was the very price Jesus paid to enable those who will believe in His death and resurrection escape God's wrath and His impending judgment against sin. There was absolutely nothing from this world that could save you and me except the sacrifice of Christ's life for us sinners. Not our righteous deeds, not our piety, not our good works and religion, commendable these things may be. But only through Christ's atoning and redeeming death at the cross in Calvary. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. He died so that we who are dead in our sins can receive life eternal and salvation. The beautiful fact about the Christ's death was its objects 
us. Christ died for you and me, for others as well, and actually for the whole world. And He did it out of love and compassion for our condition. We are sinners, unacceptable and unworthy before God. Yet, still Christ chose to give His sinless life for us who are drowning in our own mistakes and sins. That's the beauty about His death. The book of Romans 5, 6, and 8 says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us.